Hi everybody out there in YouTube land. I just thought I would duck in quickly and give a, a quick video tutorial of something I learned in Mega Studio 5. Uh, it's in all the manuals, it's nothing I made up of course. But um, it is something that helped me a lot in what I've been doing lately which is digital painting. Um, I've been using Mega Studio 5 for it because the paint engine is so cool and the uh, color adjustment layers are so good now. Um, I used to use Photoshop quite a bit but the overhead for that resource wise is significant as anyone can probably tell you and my computer kept lagging so badly that I couldn't put down strokes so the answer so far has been Manga Studio 5 um, not only can you do comic book outline type work and uh, color fills and things like that like in the old days of Manga Studio 4 but now with the new paint engine you can do digital painting as well and it's it's pretty robust you can do quite a bit in here um, one of the things I like best about it is that that I just recently found is that it does layer um, masks and adjustment layers just like Photoshop has. The, uh, the layout's a little bit different though, so for Photoshop users or former Photoshop users like myself, I thought maybe I would put together a little quick tips and tricks thing here and let you uh, see what I've learned. Hopefully, it can help you. Okay, so what I've got here is a layer with some transparent art on it, just this little guy, and the background default layer, which Manga Studio calls paper. I've changed it to gray just to make it easier to see. Um, what I'm going to do is put together a quick adjustment layer here. I mean, a quick layer mask here. So you just select new layer. And then one of the weird quirks about the layer palette in Mega Studio 5 is that if you right click on the, the image part, you get one set of options, including things that are useful like lock layer, lock transparent pixel, which lets you paint on just the image's uh, pixels and not the transparent background, and um, all kinds of other things that, that involve the imagery on the layer. But none of these are layer masks, obviously. But if you right click on the text, you get an entire new set of options, including layer mask. Now this is this confused me to death because I wasn't, didn't realize I was clicking on the image or the text at any given time, and uh, it's frustrating when you can't find this in the menus like you wanted to. Okay, so with layer mask you get two quick options. Normally you'd make a selection to make a layer mask, but I'm going to do the whole layer, which means at the moment nothing is selected. Um, the two options are mask out of selection area, which means mask out the areas that are not selected. And this one is mass selection area, which means mask out the areas that are selected. I'm going to pick that one. And since nothing is selected, nothing gets masked out. But what you get here is a mask layer on the side. And again, if you right click that, you get a set of options for the mask itself. If you right click this, you get a set of options for the content of the layer. And if you right click the little bit of text you can still see, you get those other text options again. So keep that in mind when you're selecting and right clicking on your layers. There's a lot of information in here. All right, so at the moment the mask is completely filled. There's no content getting through, although there's no content on the layer anyway. So let's quickly throw some content on there. Doing it backwards as I like to do. Just fill it. Make sure you got that one selected. Purple. Okay, so everything on the layer is purple. The mask is completely open, meaning it's basically just there's no mask. Um, I'm going to lower the opacity on that whole layer just so I can see what's going on. All right, so you've got your mask. Normally in Photoshop you'd be dealing with black and white for your layer. <clears throat> it's already white, which means it's masked out. So you would grab black and you grab a brush or something and you jump in here and start scrubbing out areas you wanted to show through. But you notice nothing's happening. And you can do you pick white. You're like, okay, maybe it's some other color. Maybe it's any other color. No. The weird thing about Manga Studio, and this is a little hard to wrap your head around. Manga Studio is designed to do transparent layers of pencils, inks, colors for comic books, for separations to make them much easier to print. So what that means is by default, Manga Studio deals with layers in terms of either transparent or not, rather than colors. So layer masks need to be um, punched through with this transparent ink color, which means nothing basically, sort of like an eraser a little bit different in the way it works but it's it it gives you the same effect so basically you get a layer mask you've got transparent color selected you pick a brush of any kind and you get different effects for different brushes i've got transparent watercolor here because i wanted to show off the transparency and make that big enough to see okay and then you start basically erasing out of the mask and with the transparent watercolor you get these soft edges on your selection and it's hard to see on the video, I'm sure, but you can see there's a little bit of wet edge on my selection, too. And, of course, I'm using a tablet, so the harder I press, the more it, it lays down the non-color, or erases in this case. It's 
So that's the hard part. That's the part I had trouble wrapping my head around is the fact that it's either transparent or not, and that's what makes the difference in, in a mask. So if I go back in and pick black, I can fill the mask back in with it. Even though on the image of the layer mask, black is where it's showing through. And you'd think I'd use white, and just white, but it doesn't matter. Any color that's not transparent, which is pretty much any color, has the same effect on a, on a layer mask. You're dealing with just straight transparency, transparent or not. And the way the tools work exactly the same way they do with any other paint. So I can do, with the watercolor brush, you get these layers of opacity when you, you go across each other. So you get all kinds of crazy subtle effects. It's, it's digital painting, basically. And the fact that it's layer mask means it's non-destructive. My original art's unaffected. And that's why you use layer masks. That very reason. Um, okay, the other quick thing I wanted to show in this video. Just delete that. And like Photoshop, it deletes the mask first and then deletes the, the layer. You can't delete the layer without deleting the mask first. Is uh, adjustment layers. <clears throat> which is a way to adjust uh, aspects of the image through a mask, automatically through a mask. It doesn't, you wouldn't think it would be, but it, it automatically dumps in as a mask. Now, in Mega Studio 5, they call them tonal correction layers, but it's the same thing as an adjustment layer in Photoshop. I'm going to pick uh, brightness and contrast, because it's easy to tell what that one does. You'll notice there's no, no effect at zero, because it's the default. But I'm in preview mode right now, so it, what I'm doing is, is just a demonstration of what it will happen when I except these layers. Okay, so if I jack the brightness down and the contrast way up, you get this crazy posterization thing. Okay, so I right click to accept it. Now what I got is an adjustment layer here that is its own layer. Trans it's uh, adjustable opacity, has its own mask built in. So again, we grab that transparent color, we get the mask. We come in, we can erase out the adjustment layer effects. I can have that happen in just part of the image. And it works with any of the new blending modes they have here, which are a lot like the ones in Photoshop with a few exceptions. All in all, there are a ton of new options in Mega Studio 5 that make it great for digital painting and drawing. Uh, pretty much anything you need to do in Photoshop, you can find a way to do it in Mega Studio 5. And with those real-world media tools, it looks great. Uh, thanks for listening. Sorry it took so long. Keep making stuff.